Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. This is Brian, and I'm just here to give you a really quick tutorial on utilizing the Futures Trade Tracker spreadsheet. Uh, what this is, this is a tool that I use to track my trades and also to plan my trades. Uh, as I've mentioned before in previous lessons, I feel like it's really important to have a plan before you go into the market. We should understand what we're trading and how we're going to trade it. We should understand what our risk is and how we're going to manage that risk. And this spreadsheet is part of that process of, of what I'm doing to understand, uh, A, how to get my trade sizing correct for my account size, and B, it allows me with a log of what I've traded so that I can go back at the end of the day, look at my trades, and have that internal discussion of what was done well, what could be improved on. Because remember, it's very, very, very important for us to be honest with ourselves about how we're trading so that we can uh, keep ourselves in the right mindset and uh, make improvements if needed. So anyway, let's just walk through the spreadsheet real quickly. Uh, by the way, when you're watching this video, uh, if you're watching it in the members area, there is a link to download the trade tracker. You'll find two links actually. One is to download an Excel copy of the trade tracker. The other is to download a numbers copy. Uh, the Excel copy, if you're using Microsoft, then you'll want to use utilize the Excel version of that. Uh, if you're a Mac person like I am, um, you'll have the, the numbers version. Numbers is a spreadsheet program that uh, comes with most Macs. Uh, personally, I use the Mac version. I use Numbers, and that's where I, I do all of my trade logging. I, I do my trading on my trading PC, and I do my, my logging and other business operation on my uh, regular MacBook Pro. So anyway, um, they both operate in pretty much the same fashion. You're going to find on both of these the same information, and they start with a summary tab, which is what we're looking at right now. The summary tab is where we'll put in our balance. So uh, right here in cell A3, you'll see starting balance. And this is where we would put in the amount of money that we're starting with or the amount of money that's in our trading account right now, today. So let's say you're starting with a $20,000 trading account, you would put in $20,000. Uh, the next field down this modifiable is the risk section. Here in cell A6, we have how much or what percentage of risk we're willing to take per trade. Now, in previous lessons, I've talked about this. I, I've said that I feel like one or two percent risk is is a great place to start. Uh, the default setting is for two percent. You could certainly change that if you like, but I would recommend only doing that after you've got some experience. So, you know, based on your risk tolerance and your parameters, you can you know put your maximum risk at whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, but I would recommend starting out with one or two percent at the max um, to begin with. But you know, once you understand what your win loss ratio is, once you understand you know what your expectancy is over time with you know series of winners, series of losses, uh, what your average win is compared to your average amount lost. From there, you can back into and, and get an understanding. You might be able to ratchet up that max risk to a different level. But 2% is kind of where we're keeping things for right now. And then the current balance, this is showing us what our current balance is based on the uh, trades we've taken and logged in the trade log. So it should kind of go along with our account as we win or as we lose. It's going to, you know, move that balance up or down based on our actual performance of what we've been logging in here. So the next tab is the actual trade log. Uh, the trade log is where we would go in and we would log the date, the symbol of what it is that we're trading, our entry price, the direction that we're trading, if we're going long or short. Remember, if we're buying, we're going long. If we're selling, we're going short. Uh, we'd log what our initial stop loss is, uh, which would then populate this green area. It would populate the area to tell us what our uh, points, how many points of risk we're taking, uh, the number of contracts we could potentially trade, the maximum of, of uh, potential risk on that trade based on the stop loss. And then from there, we would log again the actual number of contracts that we have on uh, and then what our exit price ended up being after we after we exited that trade and how much commission we were charged each direction from our broker. So these are the this is the information you would log. There's some examples above it. So you know, let's say for example we took a, a 
a trade on the E-mini, uh, S&P E-mini. Um, we, let's say we had an entry at 29.69. We went short. Our stop loss was 29.73 to begin with. Well, that means we had four points of risk on, and we could potentially trade two contracts. That would give us a max risk of, of $400 on that trade. How many did we actually trade? Well, once we put that trade on, maybe we traded less. Maybe we just traded one contract. You know, we, we, could, we would put in the number of contracts that we actually traded, and then we'd put in the point where we actually exited that trade, and then we'd put in how much and uh, how much commission we were charged on the way in and the way out for our broker. So, for example, for my broker, you know, with uh, trading two contracts, I'm charged uh, $4.10 commission uh, each way. So um, then it populates the rest of this for me to tell me that on that trade, I would have had a, a profit of about $591. Uh, it was a win, and it would have been a, a gain on my account of 3%. And you would do the same for your next trade and next trade and so on and so forth. In order to add fields, all you would do is grab this blank field down here at the bottom, do a control and C to copy it, and then you can just paste in you know, however many different lines you'd like to have of that right down below it. Um, when you enter your, your date, it is set up to be entered as month, day, year. So um, if you do want to change that, you can change that in your, your date formatting, but it's set up as month, day, year. Uh, so anyway, that's how, that's how you would utilize it to track your trades. I find it to be a great help so that I can go back and, and look at when I was making these entries to find out, did I trade to my plan? And I have to be honest with myself if I did or didn't trade in my plan, but it's a good way to review and keep a log of what it is that we're actually doing. Um, I also find it helpful in planning my trades because this allows me, as I mentioned earlier, to find um, the right number of, of contracts or right number of positions I could take uh, based on my actual account. Now, by the way, real quickly, uh, there's another tab here called Tick Values, and uh, the Tick Values tab uh, is where the instruments that I'm trading are kept. So the information about the instruments, I personally, this is this is my spreadsheet, basically. So um, the things I'm looking at are the, uh, the ES, which is the S&P E-mini, uh, GC, which is gold, CL, which is crude, and the NQ, which is the NASDAQ E-mini. So those are the symbols that correspond to what you would enter here in the trade log. Um, this is what I'm trading, so that's why this is what's featured here on the spreadsheet. It, it breaks it down to tell us, you know, what what the tick increments are, value per tick, uh, number of ticks in a point, and then what the actual point value is, you know, as as the trade might move for or against us. So anyway, that's that's what that tick values tab actually is. So how would I utilize this for trade sizing? How would I utilize this to find out uh, or to figure out what and how much? I would potentially trade and what my reward might potentially be on that to help me decide if I actually want to take a trade. So let's just talk about some hypotheticals here. Um, I've got the NQ here on my screen. So let's let's do it based on the NQ. What I'm going to do, this is all totally hypothetical just to give us some data of, to put into the spreadsheet to think through and potentially plan a trade. All right. So uh, this is not a trade. <laughs> I'm not telling you to take this trade. If you're watching it in hindsight, you know, four days from now or a month from now or two months from now, this is not a trade that I put on. I just want to make that very clear as we're walking through that. This is just simply for demonstration purposes. Uh, I don't want any emails going, you know, blah, blah, blah. You didn't take that trade. No, I didn't. I'm telling you right now. I didn't take the trade. So anyway, uh, hypothetically, I'm out here on a four hour, four hour chart. You know, I might look and plan my trade out by starting on a four hour and look at where my support or resistance areas potentially are. All right, so I might put some lines on my chart on a four hour time period and just say, OK, what's what's been going on here? Where is price struggling? Uh, you know, what are some areas that I could potentially be watching and and looking at over here? OK, so we're just looking at these areas got a couple of these tops that have been touching right here you know so we see a top and a top uh, as far as as lines on your chart go they are fairly subjective um, what I like to look for when I when I do this 
is I look for multiple points where price has stopped and struggled around an area. Um, it is an area for me personally. I think of it as an area more than just a line in the sand. Um, but that's that's for future discussion, future training. Just talking about how to utilize the spreadsheet. Let me get back on back on track here. So you know I, I might put some lines on my four hour, and then maybe I would scroll down to a thirty minute and say, okay, well now I'm in here. I'm looking for a potential trade. Well, okay, great. You know, here on the NQ, I'm looking at this. I've got a, I, I've got maybe a, an area through here where price has been struggling a little bit, especially if I adjust it and, and you know, maybe you look here a little bit closer on a, on a 30 minute. And I see where price has kind of struggled around here a few different times in this area. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe potentially I'd like to look at 7801 or 7800 as an area to trade from. Again, all hypothetical. But let's say that. Let's say, okay, great. I'm going to look at this. If this if price moves up and, and touches 7,800, I want to go short. Let's say, all right? All hypothetical. But let's just say that's that's what we're looking at here. Well, I can say, okay, well, you know, on this date and in, in time, I'm going to look at the NQ from 7,800 going short, and Let's see. Well, what would my stop loss be if I took this trade short? Where would I want that to be? Well, the high of the day has been over here. So, you know, maybe I, if I'm going to short it, I want to make sure that I give it a little bit of room to breathe, but not too much. I want to keep it kind of tight. So 7809.95. So 78.10 maybe would be my stop loss. So uh, I'm going to put my stop in at 78.10. Well, that tells me, okay, you know, you've got 10 points of risk. And based on what your value is per point, how many trades or how many contracts could you potentially trade? Well, I could trade two if I had a $20,000 account. I could take two contracts, and that would give me a max risk if I entered here and, and used that as my stop loss, a max risk of $400. Now, okay. I'm going to put that, let's say hypothetically, I do choose to put that trade on. Well, let's, let's plan it out a little bit more. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take that two. Uh, but where where would my profit point be? Well, I've got a couple of areas down here. You might look at it on a 30 minute and say, well, prices, you know, come down here as the as the low of the day. I uh, really kind of struggled around this point as well. This uh, 77, 67, 77, 70 area, you know. So maybe say, well, if, if price pushes down to 77, 70, I'd be happy with that. So you know, you might put in what your potential exit would be, and you'd say, well. You know, I'd be risking 400 to potentially win 1,200. Am I comfortable with that? And if you like those, if you like that, and it looks like a, a trade you're comfortable in taking from a risk perspective and a potential stop perspective, then you could go ahead and put that trade on. And of course, when you put the trade on, you don't have an exit price. You've got your only, you've got your your entry and your initial stop loss, right? But that would give you a way to plan your trade. So you could say, okay, well, you know, price floats up to this level. I'm comfortable in taking the trade. So maybe at that point, you go ahead and you click, you know, buy and you set your, your pending order up here. And, uh, you know, you set your stop loss attached to it a little bit above that at 78.10 and you let the trade do its thing. But ultimately, you've used the spreadsheet, even though it's a tracking spreadsheet, a, a trade log spreadsheet, You've used it in advance to plan out your trade and say, okay, well, if I trade the NQ, if I trade it from this area with this stop loss, I've only got 10 points of risk. And it tells you how many contracts you could potentially trade. So it's allowing you to size your trade with the maximum number of contracts that you could put on based on your account and based on that specific distance to stop loss. You know, let, let's say, let's just you know, do another example to show you how this might change. You know, let's say, for example, you know, we weren't looking at going long. Maybe we were, you know, or I'm maybe not looking at going short. Maybe what we were looking at here was to say, well, you know, we've been bouncing around this area, and if price comes back to 77.88 area, if if price comes back to this area, I'd like to go long. Uh, but we've been in kind of a range for the day, and it's going to you know, be a little bit wider stop loss. So maybe we say, okay, if we're looking at this from a long perspective, and I'm looking at uh, taking my trade from 77.88, and I'm going long, 
and I'm going to use this uh, 7767 as my stop loss. Maybe even believe we could even go below the low of the day. But just for example purposes, let's say we're saying, well, 7767, I'm comfortable with that level of risk. 7767. Well, now I've got uh, 21 points of risk on this. If I take the trade here at 7788, and I, I've got my risk down here, at, or my, my potential stop loss point at 77.67. Well, with 21 points of risk, I can only risk one contract on that. And where would my profit point be? Well, you know, we could look at a few different areas. We could see how, you know, different areas where price has stopped or struggled previously. And we could say, well, you know, if that pushes up here to 78.25, that would be my profit point. It gives us something to, to work for it as look work towards as a target, right? Well, you know, so I'd be risking 420 to make 740. Is that a trade that I'm comfortable in taking? You know, if yes, then you go ahead and put it on. But what we can see here is it's allowed us to look at this trade. We have a different stop loss. We have the same account size, but we have a different stop. It's a wider stop. So with that wider stop, we'd have to trade fewer contracts. You know, if this if this stop loss was let's say 7750, well, we couldn't trade it because 38 points of risk, and it would say no, you can't trade that based on your account size. So it's a really handy tool to plan your trade and allow you to do a little bit of your homework up front so that you're maximizing that level of risk based on your specific account size and the instrument you're trading and that specific stop loss placement based on that trade for the day, right? So I feel like it's a really good tool. I hope you do too. Um, use it, practice with it. It'll give you some added information that will um, help you. And I, I feel like trading based on you know that that fixed fixed risk percentage is is a little bit advantageous when it comes to growing your account uh, rather than just trading with a specific lot size because this way we you know if we have a really tight stop on something if we're you know legitimately in a, legitimately in a trade that has a very tight stop like let's have a look over here at uh let's go to the e-minis over here s p e-minis you know like on this one for example you know we we might have had a trade on over here from you know 2970 with just two with just two points of risk. Well, you know, 29.70 with two points of risk, we could uh, probably be a little larger number of contracts uh, than we would with uh, four or five points of risk, right? So uh, each trade is going to be different, and if you're trading with a with a risk percentage rather than a fixed lot size, it allows you to ratchet up or ratchet down the number of contracts traded to fit that specific. Uh, trade parameter and get the most out of each trade for you. All right. So I hope that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, uh, PS, <laughs> I, I ended that recording and then realized I didn't give you some important details. Uh, so a couple of things, there are adjustments that you'll have to make to this on the summary tab. If you want to, to keep the chart moving. Uh, so when the as the trade log, you know, expands here, the summary graphical area does not automatically pick that up. I think that's a macro, and uh, I don't know how to make it do that automatically. So what I do as I add the different rows here, or as I add different values in to my trade log, um, I have to adjust the, the, the data source manually. So to do that, what you would do if you're uh, here in Excel is you would click it and then you could go up here to um, select data. So we'd go here to select data. So again, just real quickly, uh, what I did, I double click this and it brings up information about the chart and I click on select data. 
and I click Select Data, and it brings up this little box that says Select the Data Source. And I, I go here to Change Chart or Chart Data Range, and I can I can highlight this, and then I can just simply go here to say, all right, which area do I want it to show? And then I click OK, and it puts those data points on my chart. All right, so again, double click it, select data, and then tell it the range of what you'd like to show. So as you add additional rows in, you'll, you'd have to go here and tell it, well, I'm looking from you know Q2, which is this cell, to Q13, you know, and we'd have to put in 13, or you can just drag it across there. But that's the one change that you'll have to make um, in order to keep this correct. Uh, everything else um, is, is looking at the right data and um, won't have an issue with, uh, with keeping up on our, our you know, wins and losses and, and other pieces of information here. All right, so um, that is it for now. I hope, that, uh, hope this spreadsheet helps you. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll talk to you soon.